Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to House of Restoration, Remnant House, and Witnesses of Yahoo YouTube channel. I mean, and I just want to give glory, glory and honor to the Most High. Um, as y'all see in the topic, the topic is called the Spirit of Deception. And so today we'll be focusing on that that spirit of deception that comes along to try to steal, kill, and destroy the anointing in your life. I mean, uh, that that spirit is is so uh, so cunning and so so uh, always on the on the rampage to try to try to kill uh, or destroy our the way our our anointing works. I mean. So we had to we had to pay attention to these things. We had to we had to make sure that we reprove any kind of of a dark any kind of darkness, any type of of, of uh, uncleanness or anything that comes along the way to try to uh, get you off of the the path of righteousness. I mean because. We are to be as what Yahusha told us. And if you read Matthew 24, how many times did he say, let no man deceive you? How many times did Yahusha say, beware that no man deceives you? And even right in Ephesians 5 and 11, Ephesians 5, 5 and 11 say, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And so what we're doing today is we're going to reprove or we're going to we're going to put light on these the deception spirit. And so okay, the spirit of deception, right, has three generals or or three principalities or powers that it has uh, under its command. And so if you think about it, who is the deceiver, right? Hasatan so, so he's the he's the 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 commander and chief of over those uh unclean spirits that that actually are are given assignments, and so you have the Leviathan spirit, which is the spirit of pride, or in other words, the Kudalani spirit, and the Kudalani spirit ties in with each and every one of the the three uh principalities or powers, and so when you hear Paul saying. And Ephesians chapter 6, right here, where he said, Father, my brother, be strong in Yahuwah and the power of his might. This is verse 10. And put on the whole armor of Yah that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so one thing I want, want you to want to illustrate to you is. A lot of people always think that the the demons and the unclean spirits are locked away in hell. They're well, no, they're not in hell, and you don't cast them to hell. They're they're actually in the spiritual realm, in the heavenlies, the second heavens. I mean, and so Yahuwah's uh, throne is is actually the third heaven, and then our atmosphere is the first heaven. And so, therefore, when he said that, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, verse twelve again. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yah, that you may be able to withstand in that evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, have your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all things, take the shield of belief, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of Yeshua or salvation and the sword of the Ruach, which is the word of Yahuwah. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all of the saints. And so therefore, we have to, we even even when we uh, recognize one of our brothers or sisters getting out of line, then what does it say? It says that the scripture is given for reproof, for rebuke, for exhortation. Uh, encouragement, but we we are to help get that person back in line. 
And so one thing I recognize that the pride spirit or the Leviathan spirit comes to do is it comes to steal the wisdom that Yah sends from above. And it says that that uh that in James that we end up having uh uh that type of, of earthly wisdom which is devilish, right? And it brings forth all sorts of evil works, right? And so let, let's look at what the, another spirit is. Another spirit is the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel or the spirit of seduction, the spirit of seduction, right? So the spirit of seduction, what does it do? It entices or tries to attract. So what is that one doing? So, so you got the first one that, that's trying to do what? It's trying to steal. And then you have the next one that's trying to come along to kill. Because once it seduces you and gets you in that 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 possession, it wants to kill the, your, your ruach. It wants to kill your relationship with Yah. The first one wants to steal uh steal steal your your attention from Yah. It wants you to to be prideful, to to oh to, to make it as if you're doing everything yourself. And then you have the third one which is the hypocrite or what I call the Pharisee spirit. Because if you read Matthew 23, all throughout that whole chapter, he went in on the, the uh, Pharisees calling them hypocrites, right? And so the, the word Pharisee, let's look at what that word means. It means to wound, to scatter, or to separate, meaning that that spirit comes to destroy. It comes to divide. It comes to to to. to take away so now as we take a deeper look into the spirit of deception who the deceiver is which is Hasatan, which was a liar from the beginning right so so we see that he has these three uh powers or principalities at work and what they 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 generally do is they want to try to separate you or or as i said before separate which is to destroy or it wants to uh kill your relationship with Yah or either it wants to steal uh your your humbleness that you would have before Yah to serve as an obedient servant, right? So you have to be careful because what is pride? Pride is having an excessively high opinion of yourself, um placing yourself above others, right? And so when you tie all these spirits together, well it it, it shows that the spirit of deception is at work. And so we have to be careful because those and those three different angles, those three different angles, the enemy uses those angles to call believers to fall away. Right? And when I say to fall away, meaning that that they we talked about this before, you can have a slip and you can you can you can catch a bounce and get back on. But if you have a fall, it, it's hard to get up. Sometimes, but you can get back up and get back, you know, get back on track. But then you have some people that just fall off the wagon. And then the first thing they start doing is blaming Yah. Why? It's because they allow these spirits, because they're dealing with people that is not of Yah. They're dealing with people that, that is, is of the world. And they're allowing people of the world. And, and I want to tell you something. You have to be careful with, with those that are out there in the, in the, uh, churches and the preachers and the teachers and the apostles and all these different people because when when you find a person that does not want to humble themselves now you know one thing that i love is that that when when i when i'm under a leader that he does not want to be uh held on a pedestal i mean he wants y'all to be he, he wants y'all to be that that first he wants y'all to be the one that that is recognized and you can tell when you have a leader that is that type of way that decides that they that 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 pride is allowing them to uh uh seem like they're they're above everybody else and, and they need this done and they want that done. So let's look at uh Proverbs 8 verse 13. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13. The fear of Yahoo is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy in the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. This is what Yahoo's, Yahoo is saying. He's saying that he, he pride and arrogancy. Uh, that's what, what pride is, is an arrogant spirit. Meaning that it's just above all, like, oh, I, I, I'm not wrong. And so when, when you have people 
that don't think that they're, they're wrong, don't think that they can be corrected, don't want to be corrected because in their mind they're right. Well, Scripture said that a fool is right in his own heart, right? A, a, a fool is always right in his own heart. Think about that. And, and when, whenever you have the, the, the mindset to think that you are always right and that you can never be wrong, then that's a problem. Let's look at another one. Proverbs. Chapter 11, verse 2. Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 2. And we're still talking about the Leviathan spirit. And, and, and when you look at that, the word Leviathan in Hebrew, it means twisted or coiled. And remember earlier I was talking about the Kundalini spirit. The Kundalini spirit in Hindu, in Hindu is, is, is called the coiled one. So, so look at that. And so a Leviathan is what? A water dragon or a dragon. And, and when you read about it in Job, it talks about uh it, it talks about his 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 how how strong he is and how how uh his how airtight his, his scales and everything is. And so so it, it talks about this beast as if it's it's just you know greater than many of the other uh beasts that were made in the earth. This in the behemoth. If you read up in, in Job, I think that's Job chapter 40, and I'll put it on the screen for you, uh, whatever scripture it actually is. And so now, now let's look at Proverbs 11 and 2. Look what it says. It says, when pride comes, then comes shame. Think about that. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the lowly or the humble is wisdom. So so that's what I'm trying to so so what the pride spirit does is it wants to steal the wisdom, not your wisdom, the wisdom that Yah sends down through the Ruach to use you as an instrument to help others. It wants to steal that wisdom and it wants you to have it, it wants you to exchange it for earthly wisdom which is prideful. And that earthly wisdom which is prideful makes you think that every time you and see, it's something that I want want people to understand. Don't think just because you don't have a dream. Don't think just because you don't have a vision. Don't run out there jumping and running and going to tell somebody something all quick because you think you're right. Because the minute you start saying, I think, that means that you're involved because I was placed in there. When you know and you get confirmation from Yah. See, this message that's given to me today is confirmation from Yah, because earlier in the week, in the spiritual realm, I heard that the spirit of deception was high in this season, right? And then we hear, we start, we heard a message about the Leviathan spirit, and then I began to, to uh, me and my wife began to, to converse, and we talked about the Jezebel spirit, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, she don't realize that we're, we're going there. And then as I sat and meditated a little bit more as I was reading scripture and going over my message, y'all revealed to me the hypocrite spirit or the Pharisee, what I call the Pharisee spirit, the spirit that is, is an actor. It portrays itself. It's a two-faced person, a dissembler, a pretender, a divider, right? And so now look at Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 10. Only by pride comes contention. But with the well advised, here we go again, is wisdom. Is wisdom. And so we want that wisdom that first comes from above, from Yah. We don't, we don't want the devilish wisdom that brings forth strife and envy and all types of evil works. We don't, we don't want that. And so what we have to realize is. We can't just be sitting there listening and, 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 and taking on what everybody's saying. You have to test the spirit. Once again, we talk about this. And listen, any any of you ever find anywhere where I need to be corrected, I please ask that you put it on the chat, that you reach out to me because I'm not above being corrected. There has been times where I have had to be, be corrected. And then there has been times where people have tried to correct me, and not not through pride, but through the ruach, through the spirit, y'all was telling me that now you have to pay attention because that person has a spirit of jealousy. 
They don't want you to, to think that you know this. Because, see, you you haven't been doing this. So, so you have certain people, and, and this is my point, you have certain people that, that think because they've been doing or walking longer than you that they they have more uh, wisdom and knowledge. But listen, Yah pours out his wisdom to whom he chooses to pour it out. And who, how he decides to use that wisdom is up to him. So, so when that person comes along trying to tell you something that Yah has already told you, hey, listen, if you know that Yah told you it and it's NC man and he has confirmed it through two or three different witnesses, then you don't allow it to change your mind. But if now, if you just sitting up there doing something on your own thing and you know that's your own thing, you need to be able to, to be able to receive that correction. Scripture says, do not get all, all discombobulated when, when chastisement comes because those whom he loved, he chastened and rebuked. And sometimes rebuke is going to come along with 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 uh, what's going on. And one, one wise person told me this. He said, look, if you can accept when people give you uh, uh, when they when they give you honor, then you ought to be able to accept when they give you rebuke or even 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 are are attacking you in the wrong way. You ought to be able to accept it because one thing that is showing is that you're reaching their attention on both sides. Y'all look at both some some things differently. You know, uh, sometimes we we have to we have to come from a different perspective. So let's look at Proverbs. Once again, we in Proverbs chapter 16, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5, but we still talking about this prideful spirit, this Leviathan spirit that wants to twist and coil uh, itself uh, and choke out the word from within you so that, that you're not no longer walking on the word of the righteousness of God, but you're walking off of what you consider your own righteousness in your own eyes. Because remember this, a man can consider his, what he thinks he is doing good, but in y'all's eyes, that may not be good. Remember, he he resists the proud, right? He resists the proud, but he pays attention to the humble. And so we have to we have to keep that in mind. We have to look and pay attention as we look in these scriptures. Y'all reveals how these spirits operate. And so as we talk about pride, and we see he does not like pride. Y'all doesn't like pride. And see, this is what happened with Hasatan. And so this is why these three are his pop, his, his principalities, his powers. The spirit of Jezebel just that's a, that the spirit of seduction. The, the, the spirit of Pharisee is the hypocrite spirit. The spirit of Leviathan is a prideful spirit. It, it doesn't want to be told into that. Right? The seducer wants to attract and entice. And the hypocrite has to pretend. And he's an imposter, a dissembler, right? So look at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to Yahuwah. Do you, you hear that? Abomination is, is an abomination, uh, something that's detested, something that, that he can't stand, an abomination, abomination. Let's, let's look at what that word means, abomination. A thing that causes disgust or hatred. A thing that causes disgust or hatred. So you're an abomination to Yahuwah. Though hand join hand. Listen to that. Though hand join hand. It don't matter how many of you get together with that proud heart. He shall not be unpunished. You, you're going to go and you're going to be, you, you're going to get dealt with. You're going to get dealt with. Y'all going to lay hands on you. And so we, we as his people, we have to recognize when that prideful spirit is coming. Listen, today, for instance, I had to recognize sometimes because my guys be like, man, I like the way that you do this. I like the way that you do that. And, I, and, I, and you know, instead, I, 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 had, I have to learn and I still have to say, Father, forgive me. I should have gave you glory on it because it's you that doing this. It's you that's guiding me. I ask you to direct my path, to lead my way. And if you find yourself doing that, ask me. Father, forgive me. You want to stay humble before him. Remember, the only way that you can resist the devil is first by becoming humble and submitting yourself unto Yah. That's what humble means. To submit. To, to, to find yourself low. 
Not not high because those that, that sit high, guess what? It said one day they will be abased. They're going to be brought low. They're going to be brought down to the ground. And they're going to be shown that they cannot defy the almighty Yahuwah Elohim. I mean, so look at this. Proverbs. Stay at Proverbs chapter 16. Now we're going to move to verses 18 and 19. Pride goes before destruction. You see that? Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. A haughty spirit before a fall. Better it be a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Then to be, it, it's saying it's better to be with the humble and lowly that may seem like they don't have much than to be up there dividing and, 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 and the whatever you gained over here with the proud. So, so in other words, whatever whatever's going on over here in the world. That you don't want to be a part of that. But whatever's happening right here with the lowly, you want to be a part of that. You want to be humble. You want to go through your suffering. You want to be able to have the 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 the, the you want to be able to have yourself to be called well done, good and faithful servant. Not I depart from me, I never knew you because of your pride. Let's look at another one. Uh Isaiah. Isaiah. Chapter 2. Look what he say. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 12. He said, For the day of Yahuwah Sabbath, Sabbath shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up. Listen to this. And he shall be brought low. <laughs> Those that want to sit, remember, because either you're going to allow yourself to sit on that throne or you're going to allow Yah to sit on the throne. See, Hasatan, he he has his own little little momentary kingdom for right now. He rules this this world for right now. For right now, and 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 really, he doesn't rule it. Yah Yahusha just giving him a, a moment or a period of time, and then when he comes, he's coming to rule with a rod of iron. But his people, we will rule and reign with him that suffers with him. But if we deny him. How do you deny them through pride? Because you're saying I I can do this myself. But yeah, yeah said that if you could have saved yourself, then I wouldn't have to send my son. Huh? If you if you were able to 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 uh deliver yourself, then I wouldn't have had to send my son. Right? If you were able to do all this, then why did I have to send or why did I have to give up my throne? My my equality with Yah, which was Yahusha, he, he didn't count it robbery, but he came down as a humble, obedient servant and was even obedient unto the cross, right? And yet we don't even, the hardship that, that they had to endure during the old time with the Romans, my goodness, we, we barely go through any of that and, and, and all it takes is for 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 your lights to get cut off or for 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 you to get cancer or whatever, some kind of illness. And then the first thing you do is you blame God. And you allow yourself to get, get caught up in all that mess because you're allowing those to talk in your ear. And so as we get ready to go, get ready to start discussing the seducer spirit, the seducer spirit has what? A lying tongue. A lying tongue. Look at look at uh James chapter four. James chapter 4, verse 6. It said, But Yah gives more grace, wherefore he says, Yahuwah resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. He, he, he pardons the humble. That's what it's saying. But the the the, the proud, those that, that fight against them, oh, he resists them. And so in that day of his wrath and calamity, then they're gonna feel the pain. They are going to feel the pain. It's going to be just that serious. And so as we look at the spirit of, of, of pride, the spirit of seduction, the spirit of hypocrisy, we have to really understand that all these are working through the spirit of deception. They're working through the spirit of deception. Hasatan, just like, listen, just like any commander, 
and at war. Because remember, this is a spiritual warfare. How how can how can you uh uh ever go on the battlefield and not go prepared? And so when you go without that armor of Yah, all those things that he names, he has a spiritual thing. Because remember, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down the stronghold. Because Yahuwah, right, fights that battle on our behalf through the Ruach HaKodesh. But when we think we can do it on our own, then that's when we have a problem. That's when we have a problem because you know what begins to happen? We begin to, oh, man. I did this. That's why Paul said he don't, he, he said he'd rather boast in his infirmities than to boast in himself. he rather boast in, in, in the tragedies and the things that happened to him than to boast in himself to think that he's greater than what Yah is. Why is that? He said because through his weaknesses, Yahuwah's strength is made perfect. And so that's why we have to be humble, not proud. Not proud. So we don't we don't want them to resist us. Look with Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. It said, Thus says Yahuwah, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. And, and basically what it's saying is don't try to take the glory for yourself. If 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 you have riches, hey. Do as, as scripture saying, help the poor. If if you have a uh, wisdom, don't don't use the wisdom for your own benefit, for your own uh, uh, recognition, trying to get fame and all that different type of stuff. Because that's what people do. And then it said, not let the mighty man or, or the one that that has uh you know good sports abilities or uh, uh, agility or whatever the case is, the mighty man that, that you know, those are the ones that w went to war, but none but think, David, listen OA gave glory to Yah whenever he fought the battle, he fought it on Yah but see, it was a time when in this spiritual warfare, he had become prideful, right? And so when he sat there and did a consensus he was so prideful he didn't realize that this was Satan Tempt him. He didn't recognize that. He he in his heart thought this is what he was supposed to be doing. Say he heard. Let me find that scripture real quick for you. Cause, cause uh I, I found that very interesting that when you read that uh that he did the, the census and, and you read it in and two different areas, right? So you have one account in 2 Samuel. Let me find it real quick. You have one account in 2 Samuel, chapter, uh, I want to say 24, I believe it is. It's somewhere. Because I was tripping when I read it. I said, oh my goodness. Uh, how how is it that he can be in such a a place with Yah and yet he he messed up to that point where he heard Satan instigating for him to take the consensus right so I know one of them is in and I can find that one real quick. Chronicles, Chronicles, chapter 21, Chronicles. Uh, First Chronicles, my matter of fact. First Chronicles 21. Y'all forgive me, I just, that one just came to me. So look what it said. And Satan stood up against Yasharel and provoked David to number Yasharel. And David said to Joab and the rulers, "Go number the, uh, go number Yasharel from Beersheba, Beersheba even to Dan." So let's see, cause the in the first one it does not say that. 
And the first one, it does not, it, it does not say that. And it's second, let's see, second Samuel chapter. Oh, I was in the wrong chapter, 24. And again, the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Yasharel, and he moved, listen, he moved David against them to say, go number Yasharel and Yahuda. And so when it's saying he moved them, it's talking about Hasatan. <laughs> he, listen, go back to verse, two, uh, first Chronicles chapter 21, verse one. And Satan stood up against Yasharel and provoked David to number Yasharel, what does Satan mean? Adversary. Hmm? Deceiver. He He's the deceiver. He's the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So look at that. Let's look at another one. Philippians real quick. Philippians. Right? Uh, uh, let's find you real quick. Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory But in humbleness of mind Let each esteem other better than themselves You supposed to You supposed to Give Don't give don't don't hold yourself to so much high esteem. Don't be arrogant about the way that you do things. And so, listen, I feel guilty of it. And I have to say, I have to say it all, all the time. Y'all forgive me. I give you the glory. Because it ain't my place that I'm doing this. You, you that that's your doing. That's your God and me. So now let's look, let's go into talking about the seducing spirit real quick. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter four. Verses 1 through 7. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, but giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Do you know when the slaves, whenever they were, were uh, brought into a, 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 a master's house, then they were seared with a hot iron or brand to say that this is this is my property. And so when he's saying that your mind is being seared with a hot iron, it's saying that you have become the property of sin, the property of the deception spirit. Because now you're in a place of being deceived, thinking that you are doing justice to somebody. But it says when you deceive or Deceive others, you're deceiving yourself. Look what else it said. Forbidden to marry and command to abstain from food which Yahuwah has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of Yah is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of Yahuwah and prayer. Listen to that. Through the word of Yahuwah and prayer. If you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you shall be in a good minister of Yahushua Mashiach, nourished up in the words of belief and good doctrine, whereunto you have attained. Listen to this, but refuse profane and old women's fables. And I think in, in one of uh, what you got, it's an old Jewish fables. And exercise yourself rather unto righteousness, unto doing the right thing. Not allowing yourself to get caught up by this seducing spirit or this Jezebel spirit. Let's let's read about that real quick. Uh, and look in Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you. Now remember, this is what he was talking to the churches. And he said, because you suffer the woman of Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants. Listen to this to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now, what was Paul saying back there in 1 Timothy 4 and 7, 1 through 7? He said, now those things that are received through prayer and, and given honor to Yahuwah, those things that you eat, 
But when you know that it's sacrificed unto idols, when you know that that you're you're committing fornication, and think about it like this, and I want you to really stop and really think about this, because if you're fighting a spiritual warfare, then you're also in a sexual warfare. Y'all didn't hear me. I said, if you're fighting a spiritual warfare, you're also in a sexual warfare. Why? Because the intimacy that you are to have with Yah, if you're out of whoring with other spirits, right, and uh, and being seduced by them, then you're stepping out on your Messiah. You're stepping out on your partner in the spiritual realm. This, this is what's happening. And so while this is why we have to be careful of the seducing spirit. Let's look at uh, First Kings real quick. First King. Cause because what, what was Jezebel known for? She was known for killing the prophets of Yah. Jezebel had one one dude that so shook, he 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 didn't even want to obey what, what uh uh Elijah was telling him to go do. Look at um he she even shook Elijah down for a minute, had him ready to die. Had him ready to die. That's how that that's just how 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 uh enticing. Now remember this, and at one point in time, she, Jehu was 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 given the authority to to kill her. Yes? But guess what? She started doing before when he she looked she started putting on makeup, trying to pretty up herself, trying to down to herself up to look pretty for her. But Jehu said, I don't know, I was giving them the authority of Yah through the anointing. See, when you have the anointing, you won't allow anything to induce, uh, seduce or attract you to, to different things other than what Yah has. And so each and every one of us, that's why we have to have a humble spirit. Because the humble spirit helps us to fight against this, this Kundalini, uh, this, this uh, Jezebel and this Pharisee spirit. The spirit of deception is ultimately behind all three of those. And so the spirit of deception is, is to steal, kill, and destroy. The spirit of deception wants to wants to remove all the your the, the presence of, of Yahuwah out of your life through you not having that relationship with Yah. And so we have to be on point. We have to pay attention to the warfare that way. And when we when when we're given a leader or we're presented and Yah begins to to, to uh, reveal to you who your leader need to be, then you need to become humble unto Yah and, and serve up under that leader faithfully and do what is asked of you. And now if you, if, if now, of course, if y'all haven't went into prayer and, you, and all this stuff just coming out, out left and the right, yeah, that's something you need to be concerned with. Like, hold on, is this of, of Yah? We're just, we're just going to do this? And, and, most of the time, if you have a, a leader that that is walking in the right righteously, the first thing he's always gonna say is, "Let's pray on it." Because what what's gonna happen? Now, and, and it ain't and it ain't let's pray on it, and then nothing ever comes from it. It's gonna be if Yah is doing the work, or, or if you're doing the work of Yah, and Yah has placed this in your spirit, and y'all begin to pray together, and He begins to cause. Revelation to be revealed to, to him. Cause revelation to be revealed to you. And then somebody that wasn't even in the midst of y'all's conversation come and give confirmation to both of y'all. That's Yah moving and working through each one of you. Making his presence known. But when we're prideful, when we're seduced away from him, and when we when we pretend he can't do any of that with us. Why? And another thing, the Kundalini spirit, y'all, y'all, have you seen all the convulsing in the churches, the throwing up and the hopping and the skipping and the screaming and all that different type of stuff? That's the the hypocrite. That's the Kundalini spirit. That's the bringing attention to yourself spirit. The Holy Spirit does not move like that. The Holy Spirit moves. Let me tell you how the Holy Spirit moves. The Holy Spirit causes you to cry. The Holy Spirit causes you to, to feel concerned. The Holy Spirit helps you to comfort others when they're going through something. The Holy Spirit is a spirit that is humble itself. So it ain't going to be prideful enough to bring attention to itself 
by having you run around the church because guess what? A lot of times I have heard instead of people actually being under the unction of the Holy Spirit, they're being seduced into doing those things. They're being told. They're being told. And so as they're being told, they do it. And then you have the people that as soon as the, the preacher lay hands and all of a sudden they, oh my goodness, oh, and just, you know. The spirit of Yahuwah. Now, I ain't, I ain't saying that it ain't like a fire because Jeremiah said it was like a fire shut up in his bones. He was like, he couldn't keep quiet. He had to speak about the thing. But that's how the spirit works. But, now listen, it isn't going to work if you just think. Like saying, I think. I think that this is what it's supposed to be. I think that is what it's supposed to be. Had to be careful with that. You had to be careful with the eyes, because because I can cause myself to get in trouble. Remember, first get the speck out of your eye before you try to get the or uh, get the beam out of your eye before you try to get the speck out of somebody else's eye. Because you're throwing all them eyes around, talking about some I I did this and I did that. You ain't did nothing. I laid hands and this happened. You ain't done nothing. Because remember, he said in that day, there's going to be those that say, remember I cast out spirits in your name. Remember I healed in your name. Remember I did this in your name. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. His name is powerful. Hell yeah. But there are imitators. There are pretenders. And there are seducers. And there are prideful uh, uh, people out there that is leading the, the people of, of Yah strength. And then even in our own mind, as babes, we had to be careful. We had to come under subjection to, to some type of, of leadership. We had to. Because when you begin to think, you start thinking, oh, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what a babe is. A babe is like a like when you first set a grill on fire. <laughs> when you first set a grill on fire, what's going on now? The flame is sitting kind of high there. And if you just throw the meat on there, guess what's going to happen? The outside going to cook, but the inside still going to be raw. And so this is what happening with a lot of babies. They're being fully cooked on the outside, but the inside ain't nothing getting done to it. So the inside is supposed to be prepared first. And then the outside. But see, the way that is happening in churches, they're trying to get their this together and all that together and all this together instead of getting this together. And getting this together. And allowing Yah to reign on the throne of your heart. Allowing Yah to give you the wisdom that comes from But Let's look. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18 verses 12 through 13. And this is uh, Obadiah talking to Elijah. Right? And, and it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from you, that the Ruach Yahuwah shall carry you with or not, and I, that I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find you, he shall slay me. But I, your servant, fear Yahuwah from my youth. Was it not told you, my Lord? Listen to this. The this, um, point I'm trying to make is that Jezebel, the Jezebel spirit, is there to try to kill the, the prophets of Yah, the spoke people of Yah. It does not want us to be able to operate properly. So look what it said. It said, verse 13, Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel, the prophets of uh, uh, slew the prophets of Yahuwah, how I hid a hundred men of Yahuwah's prophets by fifty in the cave and fed them with bread and water. So the most important thing I want you to see out of that is that Jezebel was the one Killing the prophets. Now remember, Jezebel's name is daughter of Baal. That's what Jezebel means. It means daughter of Baal. She's a seductress. And, and that's what, what her job is. To seduce and to entice. And to, to cause people to, to uh, be led astray. Right? So let's look at, at something else real quick. Uh, Proverbs. Proverbs. Back in Proverbs. Where you at? Proverbs. Chapter hmm, 
1, verse 10. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. My son of sinners entice you, consent not. <laughs> if they try to seduce you, don't consent to it. Now let's read the story about a young man in Proverbs chapter 7, verses 1 through 22. My son, guard my words and lay up my commandments with you. Guard my commandments and live and, and my Torah as the apple of your eye. Bind them upon your fingers. Write them upon the table of your heart. Say unto wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your kinsmen, that they may guard you from the strange woman, from the stranger which flatters with her words or seduces with her words. For at the window of my house, I look through my casement and beheld among the simple ones, I discern among the youths a young man void of understanding. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. And the twilight in the evening, and the black and the dark night. Now remember, we're children. Of, now pay attention to this, because it's in the darkness, it's in the night. Remember that song, Freaks Come Out at Night? Look at that. It said, in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and the dark night. This is late hours, right? And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. She was cunning. Did you see that? She was cunning. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without now in the streets and lies in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day. And I have prayed my vows. Therefore, it came out forth to meet you, diligently to seek your face, and I have found you. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of mitzvahim. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take a fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. For the good man is not at home. He is gone on a long journey. Now, listen to that. That's somebody's wife. And you had it. She, she, she's seducing the young man, trying to, to uh, take him to bed. And remember what happened with, with uh, Joseph? Joseph? When the woman was trying to seduce him, what did he do? He ran. And he was accused, but he ran. Seduced and accused, ran, but he humbled himself before y'all resisted the devil. He was fleeing, and though at the time he had to suffer for some things, eventually he reigned because of that suffering, right? So look at this. He has taken a bag of silver with him and will come home at the day of the next dark moon or the new moon. With her, much fair speech caused him to yield with flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goes after her straightway as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stock. Listen to that. You see that? He, he goes as an ox to the slaughter. The seducing spirit comes to kill your relationship with y'all. What, what that woman just did was kept that man from going home to his wife so that she can cheat on her own spouse we, and, and so now we have to look at this thing spiritually because listen whatever you're doing in this this body you're gonna have to reap it whether it's spiritual or it's, it's in the flesh you're gonna have to reap it and it's gonna come now let's look at look at what happened to a young man Let's look what happened to a young man. Judges chapter 16, verses 4 through 19. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorak, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the, Pel the Philistine came up with her and said unto her, entice him, seduce him. You see that? She said, seduce him. I want to look up what 
it means in I, I, I forgot, but I, I had her name in Hebrew. Uh, the Lila in Hebrew means faithless one, meaning a uh, meaning a faithless one. So that's something that you want to be found what faithful unto y'all. And so what she was doing here is she was enticing. She was gonna entice uh my man Samson. And see wherein his great strength lies, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give you give you every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray you, wherein your great strength lies, and wherewith you might be bound to afflict me. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green cords that were never dry, then shall I be weak. And be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistine brought up to her seven green cords which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber, and she said unto him, The Philistine be upon you, Samson. And he broke the cords as a thread of tow is broken when it touches the fire. So listen, she was trying to seduce him, although he, he wasn't going to tell her. But Eventually, he broke, right? Eventually, he broke. So, it should have caught his attention when she first said what it was, and then she used the cords and then brought the men into the chamber to hide and wait. This should have been a, a, a wake-up sign to him, but he was so caught up over her. So, look what else happened. And Delilah said to him, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies, and now tell me, I pray you, wherewith you might be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new rope that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. The Lord therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith, and said unto him, With the said unto him, The Philistines be upon you, Samson. And there were liars or men lying in wait, abiding in the chamber, and he broke them from off his arms like a thread. And the Lord said unto Samson, Hitherto you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith you might be bound. And he said unto her, If you weave the seven locks on my head with the web. And she fastened it with the pen and said unto him, The Philistine be upon you, Samson. And awoke out of sleep and went away with the pen of the bean with the web. And she said unto her, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? So, hey, now, she's saying this, but guess what? That's what Yahoo is saying to many of us. How can you say you love me when your heart ain't with me? We're going to get to that. So look what he's saying. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words. She kept asking, kept asking, kept asking. Me. And you have to be careful because you have a spirit like that that will keep attacking, keep attacking, keep attacking until you finally give in. And when you give in, that's where you make your mistake. So it said... And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarene unto Elohim from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Do you see that? I shall be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And I want you to recognize something. Once you're seduced, your strength that's through the Ruach HaKodesh, it, it leaves from you. It, you're not able to, to sustain. Why? Because, because now you're under the influence. So first pride, which already uh, comes to steal your, your, your uh, relationship with y'all. But now you have this... Uh, this seducer spirit that that just gone forth to kill your relationship with y'all, right? But now here comes the 
hypocrite spirit that makes you think that you're still there in that relationship. And what people do when they have an affair, they sit up there and play this person and they play this person. Tell them I love you. Tell them I love you. And now here comes the spirit of deception. Because as the hypocrite spirit pretends, let's look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. Look what it says. If a man say, I love Yah, and hates his brother, he is a liar. But he that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love Yah whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loves Yah love his brother also. See, the hypocrite pretend to love. And, and so they claim to love Yah, claim to love their brother, but really love their own agenda, love their own uh, uh, ways of doing things. So so have to be careful, have to pay attention, because what did Yahushua say in Matthew chapter 7? Let's go, Matthew chapter 7, verses, verse 15. Look what he said. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. How did he say you shall know them? By their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. Look at Jane, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed that you do, do not your alms before men to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Meaning, when you doing things, you don't have to, you don't have to, Put put it on yourself. You don't have to. You don't have to uh, uh, be be in the spotlight. And this is what the hypocrite wants. They always want to be in the spotlight. What is a hypocrite? An actor. Hypocrite. Hypocrite. Or hypocrite in Greek. That's strong. Uh, five two seven three. A actor. A two faced person. A dissembler or a pretender. Well, guess what? The word Pharisee means to woo, to scatter, or to separate. And they were created around the time of the Maccabees because what began to happen was the Maccabees had become prideful, placed themselves in the place of the priesthood. And so therefore the Pharisees were created to cause, to separate, to, to cause a wound, to scatter all that. And then all of a sudden the Romans took rule and eh, the Pharisees were given a spot and therefore no longer were the Levites being put in charge in different places. They just started, you know, doing it like a, a government type rule thing where whoever was born out of this family, you become that person. But if you remember who the true high priest was, true high priest was John the Baptist until he was beheaded and then the next high priest in line was Yahushua Mashiach. Man. It's so awesome how y'all does this. It's so awesome how y'all uh, shows us and reveals to us these things, right? So let's look at another uh, Matthew chapter 15, verses 7 through 9. Look what he said. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, The people draws nigh to me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain, listen to this, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. The commandments of men. Have to, have to be careful. Have to watch out for that. Let's look at one last one as the train comes into the station. We're about to come into the station and about to uh, come to an end, halting in here. But let's look at what it says. James chapter 1, verse 26 through 27. James chapter 1, verse 26 through 27. Look what it says. If any man among you seem to be observant and bridles not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's observance is vain. But look at verse 27. Pure observance and undefiled before Yah, the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and keep himself unspotted from the world. In other words, when you're doing this, nobody ain't got to know that you're doing it. But you're doing it because it's, it's, it's what you're commanded to do. 
And, and not only that, that's what a humble spirit will do. So, so we have to look at these. Look at these three uh, principalities that's at place here. The Leviathan spirit, which is pride, but don't want to be told anything. You have the seducing spirit that tries to entice and attract and cause you to slip away from, from Yah. And then you have the hypocrite spirit that after the seducing spirit comes in, makes you or, or, or you begin to want to play that role that I'm still this uh, eccentric person before Yah. And, and now your role is acting and pretending. Causing dissimulation, division, strife. It also brings forth envy and every other evil work. So we have to be careful. We have to pay attention. And I think next week uh, is going to be a part two. We're going to talk about the actual spirit of deception. We're going to see how Hasatan works. How, how, what he, look at how he, the, just his words enticed Eve. And and through that it it led to to Adam eating of that fruit, and therefore Adam did what he blamed Yah for creating the woman for him, and then the woman blamed, and so it's the same thing with us. As soon as we are corrected or placed in correction or told that we've done something wrong, instead of admitting to doing wrong, we we rather blame someone else for our mistakes. We rather blame someone else. But a humble spirit learns to receive correction and it learns how to stay humble before y'all. So watch out. Keep your eye open and look. Do your own research on the Kundalani spirit. And I'll put that word up there for you. Kundalani. It is a Hindu type one. So if you out there doing yoga, you need to quit. You don't realize that you're opening up doors to, to other spirits, unclean spirits at that. These spirits have been around forever. So they know how to how to steal, kill, and destroy. They know how to deceive. They know how to, 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 to trick and try to separate you from Yah. And remember, that's the enemy's whole, that's his whole goal is to separate you from Yah. Why? Because if I'm going down, then everybody's going down with me. That's his mentality. He, he, he can't be redeemed. But you have been redeemed through the blood of Yah Shamashiach. So if you have not given your life to him, Please give your life to him today. It is of the most of the importance. Remember, he loves you more than anything. Those that is willing to uh, believe that that he came and died on the cross for you, and those that are you that are, that are willing to receive him in your heart, he will uh, save you from the wrath to come, which is the the wrath of Yahuwah Elohim on the day of Yahuwah. So, just in close, and I just want to say this is a, a very important topic. We are we are in a battle, and in this battle, you have to know your enemy, because guess what? Your enemy knows you, and he's using all of his agents. That's what them fiery darts. His, his agents are shooting fiery darts. You have spies out there watching you, and so when you find yourself around people that doesn't. Uh, walk in the same manner as you you need to be careful what you're saying around them if you ain't speaking blessing because remember the tongue it does what speak, you can't speak blessing and cursing it says uh, a, a, a fountain uh, can't produce salt water and sweet water or fresh water so we have to be careful on that who 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 what company you keep remember corrupt uh, uh, I can't remember the, the actual scripture uh, corrupt communication. Uh, I gotta look it up. That best best thing I can do is look it up instead of trying to say it. Uh, watch the company you keep. Good. How can I put it? How does that word go? Good corruption. Not good corruption, <laughs> good. I can't remember. I'm, I'm gonna put it up on the screen when I figure that. Uh, I'll probably put it up at the end. But anyway, so as the train comes in to closing, I want to say give a praise offering to Yahuwah. Thank you, Yah. 
We glorify thy name and we lift you up. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. I mean, and I just want to say I thank each and every one of you that do uh, support the ministry. Um, praise be unto to, uh, your household. Not praise be unto you, but blessing be unto your household. Shalom be unto your household. And praise be unto you for you being a blessing unto our household here at House of Restoration. It closes it. I love you. Yahoo loves you. Don't forget to say thank you, Yahusha. Talk to y'all soon. God.